There he is. Getting in. Look at this. Yeah. Seven times Mr. O himself. Oh, hey guys, even here, and no, that wasn't my voice in the beginning of the video, for those of you who are new here, this is my voice, this is the host of the channel, so here you can see Nathan Diasha and Akim Williams in a pose down, and Phil Heath is uh, calling the shots. This is gonna be a bit of a longer video though, because I have a lot of topics to cover today, but yeah, let's go with this first one, so I don't know if you caught this, this video, this is a story from some guy, I don't know who he is really, but uh, as you know, Phil Heath is uh, traveling around the world right now and he's rocking that goatee. Looks cool, looks fine. Comment down below whatever you think about his goatee. <laughs> and yeah, here do you see Nathan Diashek, who has a little bit of a trouble controlling his stomach once again, like he did at Vancouver Pro and he lost against Harry Chopin. And here you can see Akim Williams with his enormous arms and overall mass. And this is pretty much his conditioning. He's probably not gonna get any sharper from this for the Mr. Olympia. <laughs> Just kidding, of course, but you know, he's not known for having great conditioning. If he was super conditioned, if he was crisp, he would be winning shows and dominating very easily because this guy is a beast, he is huge and he is super strong as well, he's very very strong. He doesn't have the best abs but there is no bubble gut, it's not blown like Nathan's. Nathan's stomach is getting worse and worse, man, year after year. And as far as Phil Heat, we haven't seen his stomach since 2018 Mr. Olympia. He never uploaded any photos of his stomach, he showed us his arms, his back and so on, but we didn't see his stomach yet. Is it improved or not? We can only imagine, but probably not. We can see that he is huge. For somebody who sat it there skipping 2019 Mr. Olympia, he's freaking huge. So I'm sure he's trying to make improvements for 2020 and then show up bigger and more conditioned than ever. And uh, even though he cannot fix his stomach, he will still look the most impressive and win the show. I think that's his goal, but maybe he's gonna show up this year, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, he said a couple of things by this point. For example, that whoever wins 2019 Mr. Olympia is not gonna be a true champion because the lineup is so depleted. But is the lineup so depleted? Maybe we're gonna have a great lineup, actually. I mean, these bodybuilders that are competing are making great improvements. For example, Brandon Curry may bring something special to the stage, and maybe even Rolly Winkler comes incredibly sharp. Maybe somebody else completely brings something crazy. Maybe Sean Roden actually shows up. And while we're talking about Sean Roden, let me show you. He's back on the Instagram. He is back on it and he's active. He's training, he's posting videos and photos. And what do I think? What does that mean? Well, if you watched Nick Strength and Power's video, he made a couple of good points. So, for example, the first one would be that he knows something that we don't about Mr. Olympia. Maybe they'll let him compete anyways. Maybe he knows something about the case. Maybe he knows that the case will be over before the Mr. Olympia time and that his name will be cleared. And maybe simply because he needs money. Maybe because he needs uh, sponsors to stay relevant in the sport. He's uploading these videos and photos and uh, probably it's required from his sponsors because they're paying him money to do that and as you can see he's tagging them in all these posts and photos he uploaded a video of him training and he's using a supplement in the video so i mean it's not just showing up for the fans just to say hi <laughs> of course he's trying to make money because the court expenses are definitely high so he needs to make some kind of money and this is his job you know being a bodybuilder doesn't really pay the bills being sponsored by the companies is basically how bodybuilders earn their money mainly i mean just winning the mr olympia gets you four hundred thousand dollars which is not a little which is a lot of money but you know that was a long time ago it was last year i'm sure he spent a lot of it and now for this case i'm sure he spent a lot and he needs to earn more money so that's what he's doing most likely i think that's just it is he gonna show up at the Mr. Olympia? We cannot know that. We can just speculate, but we cannot be sure, so let it be. Let's see what happens when the Mr. Olympia comes. Let's hope for the best. I would like to see him there for sure. However, in the meantime, while Sean, Phil, Remy, Kai are keeping us guessing and speculating and having no idea what the hell is going on and what their plans are and what is gonna happen with them and their careers, we have some guys who are actually doing the work and keeping it transparent and they are being honest with us they are just showing us their work and maybe we should focus on them more right so for example right here you can see luke sando this photo was posted by aaron singerman and aaron says that luke is 270 pounds here 
270 pounds one week out of Tampa, bro. And at this point, I think he's a favorite to win it. I think he has a better chance than Dexter, actually. Dexter is a wild card because we have no idea how his legs are going to look. Are his arms going to be symmetrical? Is age taking a toll on his body? But we can see it right here, clearly, that Luke is looking impressive. He's huge. He is getting harder by the day. When I watched that Milos Sharchev posing video, I was doubting him, honestly. I wasn't sure is Luke gonna be in shape for Tampa because his glutes didn't look very shredded. But right now, they are getting there. They are getting there. And we had the same thing before the Arnold Classic. For example, Boston Lloyd was saying that, uh, you know, Luke is gonna have soggy glutes. That was exactly what he was saying and it turned out that Luke came up with perfect conditioning and placed third it's the second largest show in the world now we have Tampa Pro which is not as big of a show as Arnold Classic but the lineup is stacked it's a good lineup and it's all about uh, Luke bringing that conditioning and I think he's gonna bring it I think he's gonna do it because Chris Sita knows his business and this is very important by winning this show he's gonna make sure that he's gonna show up at the Mr. Olympia and with this depleted lineup, Luke has a chance to crack top 3, even. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I must just say that this photo right here looks crazy. Freaking impressive. I mean, look at the back. It's so thick. And his overall body looks Hulk-like. Hulk-like, I must just say so. Very impressive. Very big, very grainy and everything. Wow, just wow. One of my favorite bodybuilders of today, honestly. And I'm looking forward to seeing him at the Tampa Pro and to see what his full potential is. But while we're talking about the relevant bodybuilders who are actually competing this year for sure, we have William Bonac with those suspicious biceps. <laughs> I know that a lot of you were triggered when I said that his biceps are simple and you don't agree with me, but you don't have to agree with me. You guys need to understand that every, pretty much every open class pro bodybuilder today is using Sintel at least in some muscles. I'm sure that Phil Heath even is using it in his upper chest, for example, maybe even his lats or so, because you can use it pretty much in any body part, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you use it? Because you guys need to understand, if you're using Sintel, you're not gonna look like Rich Piana, or like those Sintel freaks, you won't be even noticed, you know, it's just the oil that you put very deep under the muscle. You cannot see it, obviously, because it's not under your skin, it's under your muscle, understand? Under the muscle. And it is pushing the muscle from the inside. So from the inside, it's not under the skin, it's under the muscle. Completely under the muscle. And I even saw comments like, he has visible veins, so he's not using Sintel. I mean, you guys need to educate yourself about Sintel. It's not like that. It's not like that, really. I mean, you can use Sintel and still have veins and striations and everything. And most of the guys are using it. And that's normal. But William is probably using it a bit more than the, than the others. Because his biceps are looking just freaking insane. But it looks great. It looks impressive. I like it. I like the freaks. And I don't mind him using whatever he's using. And this is a compliment for him if he's not using it. And this can never be looked at as something negative, guys. I mean, I saw comments like that. I mean, if somebody told me that I'm using Sintel in my biceps, I, I would have to be like the biggest compliment. Because somebody is saying that my biceps are looking too good to be real. Right? So this is a huge compliment. Especially if he's not using it. So, this is just nothing negative, and I'm sure that's true. I'm sure he's using it. But aside from that, it doesn't matter if he's using Sintel or not. His physique is looking freaking impressive, and he's getting harder by the day. He has complete structure, very good physique. I like his personality as well. I mean, he is a little bit angry at everything at the world, but I don't care. I mean, you don't have to be politically correct and perfect in any sense. He has a unique personality, and I like it. I like him. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him at the Mr. Olympia because I'm pretty sure he's not going to bring anything new. He's going to come the way he shows up at most shows. He's always on. He's always shredded. He's always full. I mean, now without Neil Hill, maybe it's going to be different, but probably not. I think this guy has superior genetics. I think whatever he does, he's going to look great. And I think he's going to be second place at the Mr. Olympia. I think Roll will be third. But, you know, you never know. You never know these things. These guys are so close. They all have their weaknesses and their strengths. So, we'll see what happens, but top 3 for William is guaranteed, pretty much. And that top 3 is basically reserved for Rowley Winkler, Brandon Curry, and William Bonek. Unless one of the big guys shows up, like Rami, Phil Heath, Kai, and Sean, which is not likely to happen. As far as that fourth spot, I'd say it's Luke Sando, and the top seek is also wildly open. For example, this guy right here, you know who this is, I'm sure you do, John De La Rosa. 
he's making progress as we speak and I'm pretty sure this guy is going to crack the top 6. I believe so, because he has everything that is needed and he has an amazing back. The only thing that I don't like about him is his quads, the shape of the quads. And also kind of hamstrings a little, but everything else, like his arms, his chest, his back, the conditioning that he brought at this Puerto Rico Pro was very, very good. And if he shows up like that, I think top 5, top 6 for him will be, yeah, I think it's possible. I think that's, that's very realistic. I mean, this guy is just potential written all over him. The, the shape of those muscles, the, the overall structure, the mass that he's carrying is very good and it's surprising that this guy is not placing higher, but that's because of his conditioning. He is not known for having great conditioning, but he managed peak perfectly at this Puerto Rico Pro and that's why he won it. And I think he won it pretty easily. So I'm looking forward to seeing John at the Mr. Olympia. I think he has very good chances to crack the top six, even top five. Now enough about the relevant bodybuilders, let's talk about the ones that are just teasing us every year and we want to know more and more about them. <laughs> Kai Green. So a couple of hours ago he posted this video, this is him guest posing at the Fortnite World Cup, I'm not sure, is he joking or what the hell this is, but this is just what he posted, you guys tell me what it is, and I'm sure these kids were scared, and their parents as well, <laughs> having this big of a bodybuilder dressed like this in a sadomaso kit, I'm sure he bought this in a sex shop and just removed the dildo. It's just weird, it's weird for me, and I can't imagine how these kids are feeling, are they scared or confused, and what about the parents? It's just weird, <laughs> it's just weird, but anyways, you can see his physique right here and he is looking ready to win the Mr. Olympia, if he just comes sharp. If this is recent, because I have no idea, you guys tell me down below, I just want to know, I honestly have no idea, the comments didn't really say anything, so just tell me if you know. And for the end of this video, I wanted to tell you that Arnold Schwarzenegger turned 72 years today. I wanted to congratulate him, so happy birthday, Arnold. And I wanted to say thank you for everything you've done for bodybuilding. Nobody has ever done as much as he has, and nobody ever will. He made bodybuilding what it is today, and I'm so grateful for that. He gave my life a purpose, basically, so once again, thank you very much, Arnold. And I'm sure all of you guys are thankful to him as well, so I can... Congratulate him the birthday in the name of all of you and I wish him many more successful and healthy years and I want him to stay with us with bodybuilding industry to show up at his competitions to give the trophies to the contenders to winners and he's doing an amazing job even today at 72 years he's still involved in bodybuilding industry and if you guys remember from the movie when he retired in 1980 he said I am retiring from bodybuilding and he said I'm giving up on competing, but I'm not giving up on bodybuilding. And he kept his word. Even today, after 40 years, nearly 40 years. So once again, Arnold, mad respect for you, mad respect. I know he's not gonna watch this video, but I can put it in words how much I am grateful to him. So guys, this is the end of the video, but before I actually finish it, I wanted to show you something. The owner of this shoes company, Prowl Shoes is the name, sent me a pair of shoes, so I just wanted to thank him here for it. The shoes are awesome, they are great, they are looking sick, and they are very comfortable. So check them out guys if you want, if you want to buy new shoes. They are very cheap and many champions are wearing them, for example, Kim Williams, Brion Ainsley, many others. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe, because I'm uploading videos every single day, multiple times a day, sometimes even. And if you do like what I'm uploading every day, please like the video, help me out. All the best guys, bye bye.